Uh, my name is Luca Bonaldo, and I'm really excited to talk to you about GenX, which is a um, Julia package for studying energy systems and also finding uh, pathways for decarbonization of the power grid and therefore helping fight uh, climate change. So uh, GenX was conceived and, uh, and developed around 2015 by uh, Professor Jesse Jenkins as part of his um, doctoral uh, dissertation. And over the years, it has expanded its uh, user base, first by being um, released as an open source uh, software, and later uh, by registering it as an official uh, Julia package. And today, GenX is used uh, by uh, several institutions and companies uh, worldwide, and it has informed uh, numerous studies on uh, cost-effective uh, decarbonization strategies for uh, power grids of different um, for, for different countries, um, primarily the U.S. And, and specific states of the U.S., but also India and, and other parts of the world. But let's dive into the software. So um, GenX is, a, is an open source software for investment planning in the power sector, which covers um, production, so generation, distribution, transmission, and sale of um, of uh, electricity to the general public and the industry. And uh, GenX is, is a, what is called a capacity expansion model, uh, which is a tool for finding the least cost mix of generation in your portfolio, um, um, taking into consideration factors like the prediction of the, the electricity demand in the future, or changing in the fuel prices, uh, the development of new technologies, or introduction of new policies by government, uh, and so on. So the main objective of GenX is to create an abstract model, or a model, of an energy system and then uh, run a, it, it runs an optimization model to find the best portfolio of resources uh, to meet the uh, demand on a, on a certain area, given some constraints. And these constraints can be the CO2 emission, so a cap on the CO2 emission, or um, the um, uh, uh, requirements on the percentage of clean uh, generation in, in the final portfolio or of, of resources or other, uh, or other constraints. And also uh, the analysis can be performed over a single stage or uh, with multiple stages. So you can set targets, you know, at 2030, 2040, and 2050, and then you optimize um, the variables uh, for the three stages. So of course, the GenX is, is written in Julia. It's about 20,000 uh, 20, uh, sorry, 20, uh, yeah, 20, li lines of code. But the, the core is written is implemented in Jump, and um, the 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 um, the workflow is pretty straightforward. So the user um, needs to provide a set of inputs in the format of CSV or YAML file, and then uh, GenX loads all the input. It creates the um, the optimization model uh, using jump, then the model, which is a, a large matrix, is passed to the solver, and once the solver converges, um, GenX writes the output for the user. So from a software design perspective, um, even though, yeah, even though we, um, even though uh, we, we also export some of the functions, um, GenX looks more like a NAP, than a, than a lecture library, and I'm super, after these days, I'm super excited about, about the development of Julia apps. So um, the user interacts with GenX by, again, by compiling this uh, set of data, of, of data, which can be the time series for the demand for all the, for all the regions, or the, all the attributes of the generators that you want to include. And then um, you run the, also um, um, some configurations, so which policy you want to include in the, in, the, in, the, um, in the simulations, or which solver, and what are the uh, attributes of that solver. So for example, the algorithm that you want to use, or the um, discrepancy, or the, the, where you want to stop the, the optimizer, and so on. And then you run the simulation, and you collect the results. One significant challenge with this capacity expansion model is that they scale quadratically with the number of zones and also with, with, the, uh, with the number of time steps. And this limits a lot the horizon of the simulation that you can perform, and so HPC infrastructures are almost always uh, needed. Beneath the user interface, GenX is built with modules, 
where each module define a specific uh, resource type uh, for each technology. So here I'm uh, presenting uh, some of the, um, of the modules that we have, and these are the technology for the electricity sector. Uh, that we have currently implemented in GenX, and the, um, the transmission lines are instead uh, implemented as a, as a network, as a graph uh, of nodes uh, and edges. And what, what is the last thing is, is that uh, um, each technology in GenX uses the same template of expressions or a similar template of expressions and constraints, and this makes it very easy for a developer to add new uh, technologies into GenX because the, they just need to follow the, the same template. And to bridge the gap between uh, you know, this design and the, uh, the computational hardware, GenX leverages all the Julia features that we all love, so uh, types, classes, template programming, uh, multiple dispatch. We make uh, extensive use of uh, macro, the jump macros for creating the, um, the uh, optimization model. And also um, these uh, features enable a fast development and also high performance, which are two features that are essential in an academic uh, setting. So with this, I, uh, I just uh, invite you to check out or explore our uh, repository and the work that we do at the Zero Lab. And our documentation uh, gives you all the details for the implementation uh, of all the uh, generators or all the constraints. And also um, in the documentation, you will find some tutorials to help you uh, getting started with GenX. Thank you. So any question? Yeah. Uh, great presentation. Uh, could you uh, do a short-term simulation with uh, GenX, like for uh, the day-ahead markets in uh, Europe? Um, so you can uh, the not currently. Um, not not that I, not that I know. So the time step. So you can run um, uh, one year uh, simulation or a multiple year simulation. You can also uh, do um, time do time do reduction and select some um, some like a, uh, time intervals, um, but the yeah it's it's the the the, um, the data that we are using it's more like for a prediction over you know uh, years or it's it's more for for a planning in yeah in ten years or twenty years more than a day ahead, but that that, that would be that would be great yeah. So the optimizers you're using that are standard Julia packages. Yeah. So the we use we use Jump. Uh, so maybe I can I can show you here as an example. So we use Jump, and then the uh, one, whatever solver is um, supported by Jump, then we can uh, essentially you when you run GenX, you pass the optimizer to the to the function that that runs GenX. So as as you can use Gurobi if you have the license. Or you can use HiX, which is uh, an open source one, or all the uh, all the optimizers that are implemented that are supported by Jump. We are solver agnostic in that sense. Yeah. Hi. Uh, nice presentation. Did you you only do generation expansion, not the transmission expansion? We do right? also transmission expansion. Okay. Cool. And then you have. Like power flow equations yep. or, uh, yeah. Yes. We do also uh, the COPF. Uh, we are currently um, improving it, but it's, it's av available in our, our um, first stage, let's say. But we are, if, if you go and, and check, there are a couple of PRs that are now open for, to increase the, how we model the, the, the transmission expansion, but it's, it's supported uh, right now. Okay. Great, uh, I do think okay, you have some more packages in the same optimization energy system space. Uh, yeah. If you collaborate with these, yeah. which al already have very good power models. Yeah, in fact, that there's a plan to, to also uh, integrate GenX with the Sienna um, suite that is developed by NREL, which is in Julia. It's a great package. So that, that, that's also uh, a plan for the future. Great to hear. Thanks. <laughs> awesome. Thank you.